What the heck are you gawking at? Close the door. Sorry. My bad. I slammed the door back shut, my heart an erratic mess. That was a close one. Wait a second. Something isn't nagging up here. There's a naked girl in my bathroom. I swing open the door again, the slight taking away my breath once more, even though I already knew what to expect. Naked women can do that for me. Uh, what are you doing now? You pervert? I knew it! It is Hikari. Uh, rather undressed Hikari at that. She's caught like a deer, frozen in headlights, her body tensing up in a near statuesque pose. She's down to her rather extravagant underwear, if you don't count the socks she was in the process of taking off. Uh, they match and everything. He's getting a really good eyeful, isn't he? But now she's bent forward like this, my eyes can, can't help but gravitate to, a, gravitate to her rather ample, giant... Uh, oh, uh, uh, Kendo! Huh? I snapped out of whatever days I might have been in by her shrill tone. What? What was I doing again? Booze? What? What are you doing? Shut the door already. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Shouldn't I be asking you what you're doing at my house? What does it look like, genius? Now go away. Her face is beet red. She's practically trembling with anger, though still frozen in place. But how am I well in fault here? Hmm. Walking in on a woman in a shower? Not really a great idea unless you're dating. Hey now, don't get mad at me. Actually, it's not even that great idea if you are dating to get a bit of that. I don't remember ever giving you guys permission to freely use my house. Especially not the shower. Close. The. Door. Not until you. Close. The. Door. Okay. But can you just. Uh. Her eyes give off a dangerous glow, the room rumbling ever so slightly with a frightening power. Uh, I guess this can wait until afterwards. If I want to keep my house intact. Okay, okay. My bad. Really. Flashing out, Paul Jack smiled and laughing nervously that we can go to a close once more. As demonstrated last night, sometimes retreating is the best course of action. Especially when you get an angry woman who has whole whack of powers that you don't even know and she can kill you. Well, after that little, uh, situation, I find myself downstairs, both of the girls present. Saki has the same cheerful grin as ever. Well, Hikari looks like she wants to grab the nearest sharp object she can find and gut me with it. I feel a little off. Again, that wasn't my fault. How am I supposed to know? So, do you guys want to explain yourselves? Hmm? She tells her head, giving me a nervous look. Confused look. Oh, come on. How can I be the only one to find the situation strange with this? I mean, what are you guys doing in my house? Using my things, even. Oh, that's simple. Since we were watching over you for a while now, we noticed that your parents always seem to leave really early in the morning, and that you're the only one that lives here. So we figured it'd be fine if we just, you know, let ourselves in to borrow the shower and stuff. So we pretty much just broke it at my house. I honestly don't see an issue with this. There's just girls using the shower, so that man. He he he, that was a bit of an extreme way to put it. We made sure to fix the window, you know? Oh shit. You did what? I quickly throw a glance around looking for any windows in sight. No trace of a break in the, at least. Jeez, what did they do? Throw a brick through one? I thought people knew magic could, would be more subtle. See? It's all good. She tries her best to reassure me with her limitless optimism. Her hands on her hips with a blinding smile. I can't say I mirror her enthusiasm, though. I bring a palm to my forehead, a headache beginning to set in. And for once, I know the cause of this one. Was this really necessary? Can't you guys just like magic self clean or whatever? Ooh, this happens. He had cold stares from both of them. I said the wrong thing again, didn't I? It's a guy thing, you'll get used to it. Kenta, our magic isn't just some convenient tool we use so carelessly in our everyday lives. Ikari finally speaks up again, having got her mind over her mini sulk. It takes a lot of energy just to even do something as simple as fly. And we always need to make sure we have energy in reserve in case of a surprise attack like last night. Do you think it'd be a smart idea to waste this pressure energy on something like we've done so easily with an actual shower? Fair point. But what am I getting out of this? You just got an eye full that Yeah, you got an eye full. So what you're saying is you could magic yourself clean. Her eyes narrow. 
She takes in a deep breath, her cheeks puffing out dangerously. Why do I have a sudden fear from my eyes? Ears. You're an idiot. She sighs. Instead, the air escaping her in one long, drawn out breath of defeat. My eardrums are safe for another day. Phew. What would. Like, that seems kind of random. I gotta protect my ears, but. Uh. I catch a glimpse of the clock on the wall. All this drama has really eaten into my free time before school. If I don't start breakfast now, there'll be no way I'll make it in my own time. You guys do whatever then. I'm going to make some food. I start for the kitchen by exit. Sayaki cuts me off, sliding in front of me. Her eyes are almost sparkling as she leans forward. Oh, you don't have to worry about that. Let us make breakfast instead. Considering it our way to saying sorry for this little mess. Right, Hikari? She pulls the car in by the arm. But what? I didn't agree too. Right, Hikari? She tightens her grip on Hikari's arm, a deadly edge behind her otherwise careful and cheerful words. Oh, okay. Hmm. Let him the cook, I'm not so sure. Yeah, what's the worst that could happen, right? It's just magical girls in the kitchen. I don't see the harm in it, I suppose. She seems to mean well, and it would be nice to take it easy after all the stress. Sure. Go for it. Saki beams, making me feel confident in my choice. I think. I think. You won't regret it. You just sit back and we'll have something amazing whipped up for you in a flash. With that, she spins on her heels and waltzes into the kitchen, dragging along with her a very reluctant Hikari. I take a seat in the connected dining room and ease myself into a chair. This'll be fine, right? It starts off well enough anyway. I hear plates and utensils clatter about with the cupboard doors bang battering along. Do you even know what you're making? Well, we'll worry about that later. I'll put some of this stuff in here too. I'll pretend I didn't hear that. The frantic chopping of vegetables sounding out from behind me mixed with the Kari's panic yelps. Watch where you're swinging that thing, you're gonna take off my head. It's fine. Are you sure that goes with that? Sure it does. I would love to see an animation of what's going on right now. Because it would probably be hilarious. I have a creative eye for these things. Is it supposed to go green? Uh. Mm hmm. So we just put this on like this? I hear the unsettling foosh of flames. Just how high are they putting it on? Hmm. What do you think this is? <laughs> what do you think this stuff is? I have no idea. Oh well. It, and it goes anyway. Uh. Things go silent in the kitchen. I can't tell if that's good or bad. I'm too scared to look. Is it re this really okay? Yup. This is how it's supposed to. Be. Ah. Something explodes in the kitchen. Thick plumes of air. Air smoke waft in the dining room. Hmm. Put it out quick. It's going to spread. How do I do that? I, I don't know. Just try this. Woof. The roar of flames. It sounds like a grease fire. I can see the flickering amber in my peripheral vision. Hmm. Nope. That made it worse. How about this? Maybe? It might have worked. Or not. No more magic, okay? This time we will work for... No more magic! I don't know what else to do then. Yeah! You're gonna getting it everywhere. I hear water splash, a good deal of it. Incoming wet t-shirt shot, I'm betting. Like an entire bucket worth of the stuff. Is it... Is it over? Ha! I think so. And look, the food's all done. I really don't think that's... I said the food is done. Apparently done... Oh, I guess that's wrong. Apparently done uh, cooking, the pair enter the dining space. Saki has a plate in hand and a good amount of steam or whatever, maybe smoke drifting from it. I hope you're hungry, Kenta. We really want all of them all out to make this, you know. Might have been alive, they might have killed it, who knows. She puts a plate before me, a sincere smile on her face. I guess it really... She really give it all but this can't be called food oh it's uh charred burnt crisp remains of what might have been food at some point sits on the plate it feels like this might have been hazardous to even breathe in this stuff i can see hikari lurking further back clearly ashamed of whatever substance they had created I guess this is my fault for letting them anywhere near the kitchen i should take responsibility and eat the damn food be the good guy and just choke it down. I have no choice, do I? I don't want to make her feel bad after she's worked so hard to create whatever this is. 
Here, here I go then. I give this substance a poke. It bites back and stabs me the fork. It crumbles up into a fine powder on the side. Lightest touch. Okay. I'm sure even though it looks absolutely terrifying, it can't be that bad. Maybe there's something good under all these layers of burnt stuff. I scoop it up as much as I can that doesn't crumble away from my hold. I have forces it into my mouth despite all the insects screaming at me not to. It's... it's... well, it is amazing or what? Saki leans in expecting as I swallow it down. I think this must be what charcoal tastes like. Charcoal? Mm, it's very gritty. Doesn't have the greater taste though. Don't ask why. I know. I fight back the urge to choke and give her a smile and nod. Mmm. Really? Yeah, yeah, I knew it. You should let us cook for you every morning. Oh god, no. What have I done? And I still have an entire plate of this stuff left. These girls are clearly the real danger to my health and well-being right now. Breakfast soon comes to a close with perhaps a more lively start to the morning than I'm generally used to. As much of a headache as they can be, it was actually sort of nice to not be completely alone in the morning. I wasn't about to tell them that, though. Or I'd only encourage their most criminal behavior is just waltzing into my house like that. I head out for school, my two bodyguards naturally at my side. I'm almost sort of getting used to this. I don't know if it's that good or bad thing. You've only had it for like a day, man. The journey to school gets goes by peacefully and not a monster in sight. Though I can't help but shake the feeling that something is watching me. Eh, uh, maybe I'm just getting a little paranoid after. You know, two attempts on my life may have been... May... My life have been made already. Jesus. Yeah, I, ew, apparently I can't read. I'm sure it's all in my head. I read school with time to spare. Uh, that's the first. Saki and Kari keep close to my side. So very close. I practically feel the stares of my classmates, their looks ranging from resentful to jealous. I can't imagine what they must think of this whole situation. Yo, a pimp! Hey, look guys. Hmm? What's up? You really have to stay so close to me? I appreciate what you're doing and all, but I think I'll be fine in school. What if, as long as you're at least close by, I should be fine, right? I think it'd be hard for a monster to get this close to me in class without at least having caused some sort of commotion beforehand. Hikari falls silent. She narrows her eyes into a glare and folds her arms together, tossing her back to the side. Fine. Whatever. She storms over to her desk and drops into a chair, her eyes straight forward, leaving me and Saki together. Uh, did I upset her? Ah, eh, don't worry. She's always like this. Give her, give it time and she'll be back to her less grumpy herself. She's only, she only has your safety in mind and is just worried about what might happen if she has to leave you. Heck, if I had it my way, we wouldn't even let you go to school. We'd just keep you locked up in a nice room until this all blows over. Dirty. I don't think she realizes how scary that sounded, coupled with her usual grin. You're right, though. Maybe we have been subjugating you a bit too much. I can think we can afford at least little ease up during school. Thank you. I let it aside. They're finally starting to listen to reason, if only a little. The bell sounds signifying the start of class. Passed by a disgruntled Hikari on the way to my own desk. She doesn't even look my way. Harsh. Harsh. Morning class. Classes pass by in the blink of an eye. The lunch break soon arriving. I sign up and let a yawn only to find I'm not alone. Come on, guys. We talked about this. As if the conversation this morning had never happened, I find both of my guardians standing around me, oblivious to my irritation. What's up, Kanto? Aren't we going to get lunch now? I'm going to get my own lunch. You guys don't need to be glued to my side. Go do your own thing or whatever. But what are we supposed to do? I don't know. Something. Anything. I feel like you two have been pretty much attached to me since I first met you yesterday. Some breathing room would be nice. I am really ungrateful that they're here. Otherwise, I might have not met a grizzly end yesterday. Yeah, thanks for the help and everything, guys. But if you would leave me alone, that'd be great. Well, this is borderline stalking. I'm not even going to bring up how they camped outside and then proceeded to break in my house. This guy, I don't know. Seems like he has issues. But, eh. Oh, okay then. I get you. Kari understands too, I think. Hmm. Come on, Hikari. Might be fun to explore the school a bit and see what it has to offer. 
I never really had the chance to attend one before, after all. She's never been to school. Just, where do these two come from? The more I talk to her, the more she makes herself sound like she's an alien. Alright, then, Kenta. We'll do our own thing for a bit. Just yell if you need us and try not to die. And like that, she marches off, humming a happy tune. Hikari falls in her wake, but not before giving me one last icy look. I can almost feel her shoulders beginning to frost. Her. Well, I did it. I somehow convinced them to give me some space. For the time being, anyways. Mm, but now what? First and foremost, I should try not to forget about lunch again. Otherwise, I might just keel over and have finished the job for whatever dark forces that are looking out there. Head to the cafeteria. The cafeteria is as you would expect during lunchtime, completely packed. Throngs of students take up what little walking space might have existed between the tables, equally as populated. I stand my ground and gradually work my way past the crushing waves of the students that impede my path. Of course, getting food would never be so simple. Of course not. Eventually, I work my way to the front of the line and approach the counter. Naturally, after all the students before me, there was very little left in my way of choice. I guess it's either this sandwich or the other sandwich. Neither of which seemed amazingly appetizing. Hmm, sandwich or sandwich? Can't go wrong with sandwich. Eh, whatever. Anything will do after how much food I've missed out on. Cheap, bland sandwich in hand, I give it a look over the tables. Like before, they're all pretty packed. Though I do see one fairly empty table at the far end with a familiar, somewhat happy... Someone happily digging away at their lunch. Even from this distance, I can tell it's Sayaki. Her vibrant brown hair instantly distinguishable from everybody else's. I don't see a car anywhere in sight. They might have decided to do their own thing for the break. I guess if I want to sit down here to eat, Sayaki's table is the only choice. But do I really want to eat here? It's so noisy I can't hardly even think. She doesn't notice me either, completely absorbed in demolition of her food. Maybe I can slip away to the roof, where no doubt I'd be more peaceful. Eh, we'll sit with her. Then again, I can't really be bothered to scale away up to the roof when there's a seat right before me. And it might have been a wasted journey if not for whatever reason people are up there. The table it is. I approach <laughs> Saki, whose eyes lit up at the sight of me. Now, is she drooling from the food or him? Food looks really tasty, though. Kind of making my mouth water. Ugh. Her cheeks fold to bursting as she attempts to address me, frantically waving her hand in the air as food flies everywhere. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like or comment below. If you guys want to see more, subscribe to my channel and you guys will get daily updates for when I upload videos. Really enjoying doing all this. Hope to do more. See you guys in the next video. Take care and bye bye.